There is no need to adjust your audio settings. Your system is working at optimum capability. There is no need to look over your shoulder. Just relax. Breathe. It will all soon be crystal clear. Ah, there we are. True Horror Stories of Texas. The Zion Cemetery Horror. Tonight's twisted tale comes to us from the city of Frisco, Texas. A woman shares a terrifying experience she will never forget at a local cemetery. Back in 1996 through 1998, when I was between 15 to 17 years old and living in the colony, Texas, about 20 minutes from downtown Dallas, a group of friends and I decided it would be a great idea to go to Zion Cemetery. It was one of the last weekends before school, and some of us were moving away or wouldn't have time to hang out this summer. Guys, I'm bored. Me too. So what do you guys feel like doing? I don't know, man, but we gotta do something. This might be one of the last times we all get to hang out. Hey, I have an idea. Any of you all ever use a Ouija board? We can see what happens when we take it down to the old cemetery. <laughs> yeah, no way. It might be fun. Yeah, I don't know if that's a good idea. Oh, come on, Norma. What's wrong? Is the little goody two-shoes getting scared? Shut up, let's just <laughs> sometimes. Listen, <laughs> I'm not scared. Prove it. Fine. Let's go. Personally, I love going to cemeteries to just hang out and look at the tombstones or read or write. I always felt comfortable, felt peaceful in them for some reason. Anyway, me and my stupid friends, after talking about the reasons we thought there were so many children's tombstones in the late 1800s, we decided to try and contact some of the children with a Ouija board. Alright, let's see. Who do we want to talk to? Oh, come on. Like, this isn't even going to work. Has it worked before? Well, no. Yeah, but I've never used it in a cemetery before either, so... We ended up talking to a five-year-old girl and didn't get much information other than her name. And that she was placed to rest here at Zion Cemetery. You're moving it, right? No, I'm not. I think it's trying to spell something. A... L... I... C... E... Alice! Alice. Wait, what was that? Hi, I'm Alice. Ah! Put it out! Let's get out of here. Yeah, we could be doing something else. Anything else. My friends and I got bored and decided to spend the rest of the day driving around and whatnot. That night, under the full moon, maybe around 9 or 10 p.m., we went back to Zion Cemetery to try the Ouija board again. Why are we going back to the cemetery again? You have something better to do? Besides, it's dark now. Maybe we we'll have better look with Alice. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Cut it out! While pulling into the driveway to the cemetery, we noticed a pitch black car, brand new looking, maybe a Lincoln Town car or a Crown Victorian, or Pontiac Grand Prix, which all these seem to fade in and out like a mirroring effect. We only saw the car and no one around it, and the windows on the car were pitch black. We parked the car and got out. We played around, joking, the people were ghosts. My friends dared me and another girl to check out the car. Ooh, ah. Hey, Norma, I dare you to check it out. No way. Come on, I'll go with you. Ugh. Fine. When the girl and I went to check out the car, we saw a man and a woman sitting down by the car facing the road. They were sitting on a quilt and the woman was sitting Indians down, never turning to look at us. I could only see the side of her face. She looked wet, her hair soaked, and she was pale white, dressed in an all-white dress. And she never moved. The man was half bald and was laying down, propped up on one of his elbows. He looked much older and wore blue jeans and a plaid buttoned down top with suspenders. He also had another quilt that was covering the bottom half of his body. When we approached, the man noticed us and gave a warm... Hello. I replied with a nervous, hello? I felt calm for his hello, 
and ask, what, what are, are you doing here? Oh, I'm just visiting my wife. Would you look at how nice the moon looks? Isn't it beautiful? I started getting nervous because the woman never turned to look at us. The man asked if he wanted to join. Would you like to join us? Oh, no thank you. We're with friends and I don't want to bother you. No bother at all. Here, let me properly introduce myself. That's when I looked at his legs and realized that both of his legs were gone, from the knees down. I pulled on my friend and told the man, <gasps> That's okay, we're leaving now. I met my friend went back to the car where my other friends were. The only thing was just said something was wrong. They saw the fear in my eyes because as soon as I told them it was time to go, we were flying down to the exit of the cemetery. I was too scared to look back when leaving. But we could hear children laughing outside the car because my friend's son was open. We drove straight to KFC in the colony, Texas, got out of the car, started rambling to each other about what we saw and felt, and so on. What the heck happened back there? What'd you see? I can't explain it. It was as if the man's legs are invisible. See-through. I... I don't know. What the heck are you talking about? What... what man? Guys! There was this man. And a lady. Yeah, she was dressed in white, soaking wet. Guys! Yeah, and she never looked at us. Not once. She was just staring off at us. Guys! Us. What? what? Oh my god. Hey man, what the heck is this? Where did all these handprints come from? I don't know. They weren't there earlier. Get some towels. Why? We gotta clean it off. You can't take the dirt home with us. We gotta clean it. Quick, take off your shoes. We gotta clean those too. Hurry up. Why? Trust me, you don't want to know. Hurry, just take them off. We can never go there, ever. Do you understand? We vowed never to go back to Zion Cemetery. After the night, anytime I passed by the cemetery, I would get chills. Personally, I wanted to go and make peace by putting a flower on each grave and verbally apologizing as a sign of respect. I never get the chance to do it, and I believe by staying away from Zion Cemetery, that is enough of a sign of respect. One day, I plan to visit the cemetery and do as I wanted to put a flower on each grave and apologize. Well, I'm proper frightened. It is said that when visiting the dead, to pay your respects always, and I do mean always, remove the dirt from your shoes and clothing before returning home, that any dirt that finds its way back home with you could carry the very souls that have departed. True Horror Stories of Texas. Until next time, stay spooky, my friends. ha 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 ha!